Hi, welcome on to this video. We're going to develop now Charter 35, the short run trade off between inflation and unemployment. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So, we, we already know that unemployment definitely depends on labor market, on all the minimum wage laws, and even the effectiveness of job search. From the other side, we know that the inflation rate depends on growth in money supply. And actually, after several experiments, and those experiments based on real data, basically from United States, um, the, the conclusion is that in the long run, these two variables, unemployment and inflation rate, they are not related. So, we know that the policymakers they can expand aggregate demand. Who are the policymakers? We are talking about the government. It means fiscal, uh, uh, fiscal policy, or we are talking about the central bank, then monetary policy. Then, uh, at this point, we can um, the unemployment will decrease, and then the price level will increase. So. What we are going to have a look here is like in the in the in the short run, unemployment and inflation they are correlated neg negatively. Okay, so then from one side we know that the central bank the objective or most of the central bank is to keep the uh, powerful uh, acquisition of all people uh, stable. Then. They, the aim is to reduce inflation or to keep all this stable, but then uh, the cost could be higher unemployment. Then, after, after uh, a paper uh, written by Phillips, an economist, the relationship between employment and rate of change of money wages in the United Kingdom during 1861-1957 uh, they discovered or he discovered that there is a relationship uh, inverse between these two variables. Then other prominent economists, Samuel Swin and Solo, made this analysis for USA. And then the idea is basic, is simple. Just we have larger output means that greater employment and then naturally lower rate of unemployment. And due to this excess of consumption, the consequence, the consequence could be higher price level. Then, we have this, uh, this representation of the aggregate supply and aggregate demand. And then, in this one, we have an increase. For example, for this data, we have an increase in the aggregate demand. So, we have the now the equilibrium if the price level is 106. This 106 is the index of the CPI, the Consumer, consumer Price Index. We know that over 100 is an increase compared with the, with the base year. Basically, we made a comparison year by year. And then we have here higher level of prices by higher level of, of output. Then, if we want to represent that in the Phillips curve, it relates inflation in the y-axis and unemployment rate in the x-axis. We have here when the inflation is equivalent to 2%, we have higher level of unemployment and for an output of five or fifteen thousand. Then we can achieve higher output, but the cost should be uh, definitely higher inflation. Shifts in the Phillips curve, then it is started to have the idea of the role of expectation. Why? Because well, basically, first something to we need to have clear is that uh, if there is actually a variability in the slope over time in this Phillips curve. Well, it depends in these, uh, in these expectations. So actually, what we uh, learned from classical economics is that the money growth, it doesn't have, a, it doesn't, it doesn't have any change in variables, uh, in real variables. It has more, more, uh, more effect actually in uh, in the nominal ones this is the basic idea so for this reason this Phillips curve it it has a relevance in the short run then uh, 
we know that the unemployment rate, at least in the long in the long run, actually is changed by market power of unions or even the role of efficiency wages. Then, uh, actually, for this reason, Friedman uh, said, and actually after several data, discovered no relationship in the long run between these two variables. Then we have that the core of Phillips is vertical, and then it's a valid situation or it's a confirmation for the dichotomy of a classical that money growth doesn't change anything in variable and real variables at least in the long run. So here we have inflation and the unemployment rate and then we are going to be talking about the natural rate of unemployment which is definitely related with the, with the future, with the long run and the aggregate supply with the natural level of output. Then, uh, then here, ba basically what we have here when we have uh, the situation of the, in the long run we have an increase in the aggregate demand uh, in this situation. Well, the only situation that we are going to generate is an increase in the price level not any change in other in other variables at least in the long run then here when we talk about natural well this is an employment rate toward which the economy gravitates in the long run it's like the basic or the or the natural value the the unemployment will be kept uh in the in the long run and it is really important to uh, take into consideration that monetary policy cannot influence natural rate of unemployment, just like real changes really could change this variable. And then when we make a comparison between theory and evidence, well, actually we we have a look that uh, that basically the the facts are really related to what we have in the theory, uh, and then. This logic of the aggregate supply, it applies to the long run. Remember that when we talk about aggregate supply in the long run, it's vertical because the prices can adjust uh, in the long run. The basic, for example, the theory of the sticky wages, maybe the long in the short run, you cannot adjust wages, but in the long run, they are easily uh, adjusted. And then the, those variables are more affected by expected inflation. Here is the, the question that we're going to face with the unemployment rate. We have a natural rate of employment, unemployment, and then minus A. This, should go, this A factor is going to be the sensitivity of, uh, of the unemployment rate based on the gap between actual inflation and expected inflation then expected inflation is given is higher than uh, actual inflation so we have a natural lower um, lower unemployment in the long run the actual inflation is equal to expected inflation because um, everybody knows we should be effectively like the value so unemployment rate equal to the natural rate of unemployment so then when there is an expected inflation that changes it shifts the curve it depends to the right or to the to the to the left but in the short run which is really important and the most relevant during 20th uh, century is the trade off between these two variables then for example here when we have the representation of the long run uh, phillips curve and then we have here the short run basically when we uh, face a change from this curve the, the, the one down to this one, we can express in the short run a change from A to B, so higher inflation, lower level of unemployment, but if anything changes, at the end of the day, we're going to have then a C point, then we're going just to have the same level of, uh, of, of inflation, but higher level of unemployment. So then, basically uh, the, the situation here is just like the unemployment will return to natural rate regardless the rate of inflation so just in the in the short run policymakers can take or use this tool to change but in the long run more real variables should be necessary so then uh, in this situation the, the the supply shocks can definitely make some changes into the Phillips curve, can shift this curve to the right. 
actually the, the one of the most important the one the one of the most important um, example is the organization of petroleum of exporting countries the OPEC well actually they restricted uh, the amount of crude oil they pump it and actually it increased the price level it shifts aggregate supply and Phillips curve so here we have an example, we have here an, an inflation rate in the y-axis, an employment rate in the x-axis, and then we have the level of the aggregate demand in the, the, the right side, and here we have the in the in the left side, it's not the monetary <laughs> supply, it's more the aggregate and on, on demand and aggregate supply, and here we have this shock of supply which was a decrease in the supply of oil, so it generates naturally a decrease in the total output and an increase in the price level. And as a consequence, we have here a shift to the right for the Phillips curve. It means the same level of the same level of inflation, higher level of unemployment associated with this situation. This regard is why that I didn't cancel them out. So actually this is the two important facts that we need to take into account if people believe that it is temporary expected inflation will not change the Phillips curve however if people believe that this is a new era of inflation Phillips curve will change so what is the cause of reduction inflation basically the answer more unemployment is just like the basic conclusion of this chapter so then here we have the situation and when we have uh, this naturally we have from A uh, in the short run we're going to move to B so then show our inflation by higher level of unemployment but in the long run we're going to face then lower uh, lower level unemployment but the same level of inflation so this, this is the cost more unemployment that you need to you need to face so then uh, this rational expectation explain, uh, depends on how quickly people adjust their expectation of inflation. If they change from the things uh, that Federal Reserve says on the economy says about the econo economy in general, then it's going to be any effort or it's going to be any change into the real economy. Okay, so that's basic is like more about it's not not a lot of equations, not a, a lot of maths, just like have an idea that the curve Phillips where it comes from and some uh, some interesting idea about what is happening between the trade off inflation and employment. Thank you so much. See you next video. Bye bye.